Hi everyone, it's Beverly Cole, but please call me Bev. It's that time of year and I'm making art pieces to sell at our arts cafe and our art festival. I'm back in Florida. I want to use my color wheel and I've decided to use a triad and that would be three colors that make a triangle. And I'm gonna use our primaries, red, yellow, and blue. The color inks that I have are called Aqua Inks by Graphic. And I'm going to use magenta, cyan, and lemon yellow. I also have some black ink and I have some white gouache. My color wheel, I'm also going to use, again, a piece of this sequin waste because it's from punching out sequin and I also have my Posca pens handy. I'm not going to wet my brush. I'm just going to open up my color and the first one is magenta. This is watercolor ink and I'm going to just use that first. Aqua ink. Isn't it pretty? Wow. Another one. Ooh, so, so bright. Now this is called the hue, pure color of the ink, okay? The pure color. I'm gonna add some scratches to that. I just wanna see what happens if I do add, oh yeah, I can, I can definitely add scratches in to that. This one I'm just gonna, let's just uh, kinda, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Let's do that. And then I'm gonna take my scraper and just kind of play with that. Remember, I'm just playing and having fun. Let's try a little more. Whoopsie, got it on that one up there. That's okay. We'll just, I'm just gonna leave that. Yeah, water it out a bit. Ooh, yeah. I love playing with this paint and ink and the color. So this one looks a little bit wispy. And now I'm gonna put the aqua ink in this one, hold my brush by the end, and make some marks like this. A little bit more. I like it. Okay. I want the mixing to happen on the paper. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the cyan, which will make a beautiful lavender purple color with this pink. Clean out my brush, rub it through my fingers. Zip. Mm, such a gorgeous color. Mm, mm, that's so delicious. <laughs> These colors, I'm telling you, they're just so brilliant. Ooh, there was some water there. Ooh, let's have some more water. Oops, let me open my bottle here. Ooh, that's gorgeous. So I'm gonna add some more scrapes to this and see if we can get some interesting marks. And this one I'm going to kind of scribble over. This one I'm just going to leave alone. And then this one, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of the blue. I don't want a whole lot. I just want to add it in some spots, just as like an accent color. Just to see. And now I have the lemon. You know what happens when you mix yellow and blue? When you're using these inks, it happens really quickly. Lots of color. Soak up some of that color, remove some color to give us a lighter hue. There we go, that's pretty. Now 
like it. And I'm going to add some yellow to this one. And the pink is pretty dry, so it's almost like I'm putting a wash over it. Just playing. I got a little bit too much orange, so I just removed it. And now I'm going to add yellow right here. Now with this one, I'm going to put the yellow next to the... Mm, where do I want it? some circles. I noticed this look kind of circular, so maybe if I just play with that, I'll get something interesting. Who knows? And I want to clean up some of the muddy colors that I don't care for said before. If I lighten them up, they're not as bad. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really have to remove much on these the colors. Even when they're mixed, they look beautiful. Let's take a small brush and remove some. I'm going to let these dry. I'm getting some cool textures. And we'll come back. These are the dried paintings from yesterday. I really let them dry overnight. That's beautiful marks. So I'm going to add a tint. A tint is when you mix a color with white. This is gouache. And I don't want to go ahead and mix it with the yellow. I'm hoping that I can just make a wash over with the white to tone down some of the bright. And we're just playing. I just want to see what happens. And I'm going to go over a little bit of the yellow here, but leave some of the bright. Leave some of the bright. Mm -hmm. I already put it here. I'm going to dab it off a little bit so it stays a little bit bright. But I'm kind of loving this. I can. This is this is cool. And I'm not mixing the colors in my palette. I'm mixing them on the paper. So if you start to get some color on your brush with the white, just rinse your brush off. So I'm toning down some of the yellow. Then and that's a tint. So it changes it from the brilliant, pure color to a tint by putting white over the yellow, like a wash. That's how I'm doing it. I want to add a little more. I think it needs to be a little bit more. Ooh, see how it gets lighter there? I love that. I really do. I like how it's lighter there. And then it gets deeper as it goes. And you can see now how it looks light and it goes to the dark. So let's continue with that. I'm kind of liking that a lot. And the gouache is not transparent, but when I wash, make it well wash with water, it does get a little more transparent so that it leaves a wash over the yellow and the yellow can show through. And the more gouache I use, the less transparent and the lighter the yellow. I want to do it up here with the green. Oh, look at that. It washed the green completely away. And that's okay, because I can just add some water and bring that back, dab it with the paper towel, and look how light that green gets. I love that. We're starting to get some depth. Now let's do it on this third one down here. I love these two things, so I think what I'm going to do is go from up here with the yellow again, and I'm just adding water. Just adding water. And I'm only doing the yellow because that's what I want to do. See what happens with this green after that. Maybe I'll add gouache, maybe I won't. But I am adding it here to get a tint of yellow instead of the pure color. And you might have to do this more than once 
if you're experimenting like me, I'm just going a little at a time just to see what happens. I did add some right here. Let's, let's do that. Let's just see what happens. So it's lighter up there. Make it kind of shade right there. So pretty. So pretty. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So let's just try this wherever we feel like it and see what happens. I'm just enjoying this a great deal. Look how pretty that is right there. And up here and over here. Now the paper is buckling again, but this is cotton paper and it's going to flatten out again as it dries. I don't worry about that. Love what's happening. You can add some hard edges and make some shapes by simply not blending as much. This is very relaxing. It's just playing. I need some more white and I'm adding water like I said before just to make it more transparent because we don't want to lose the color. Oh, so pretty. Dab it so that it looks more blended, but I am leaving an edge here. I wanna make an edge here. I've made an edge here. It's all an experiment. So now you can see how it's not so all brilliant. You've got some places that are washed out more because I've added white. And then this one, I think I'm going to play up the lighter places. Ooh, I like that too. I'm adding white. <gasps> yeah, because I already have white streaks. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Okay, pretty. Pretty party. Just because I added the gouache one way in one doesn't mean that's the only way that I can add it. Correct? Mm. Mm. This is so much fun. <gasps> okay, so let me add more water to that and let's add some softer edges. See the washed out ones kind of end up going towards the back. I've decided to add some white gesso to this because I missed the white background. I covered it up with color and now I need to change that. Water with the gesso, rubbing it in with my finger. It's blending with my background. Ooh, looks really cool. So I think we'll just leave that one now and come back to it. Well, that looks pretty. Get away from that heavy color and just use some really creamy tint. So we got a creamy tint because I put it over the color and it was white. Now I want to use it again, but I am enjoying this one up here. I don't really care for the shape in the middle, so I'm going to do the same thing.
And then maybe we can just stick one down here, like a shadow of what's there. Then this one, I haven't really done much with this one. These two, I like them now, so far. I think I've done enough. I'm going to pull the tape off of these now, which is always the most fun part. Let's see which one is next. I believe it's this one. And I did rub this tape off on my pants before I attached it. Well, as these dry, you can add collage to them. here so now I have two paintings already and they're simple I might not be done with them we'll see and then I have these two that now have and see here how the color transferred to the edge. Oh well, we'll see how that works. Sorry. This one, maybe. I'm thinking, put this piece right there. That's kind of cool. Hmm? Kind of cool. And I'm gonna put some matte medium over that. Very cool, very cool, I like it. It might need something else, maybe some circles. I don't know, I'll wait for them to dry. With these two, I've decided to go ahead and make them into collages. People seem to really enjoy my collages, uh, and these are gonna be small ones. I have sold after, after keeping them for long because they were my babies. I decided to sell a lot of my collages and people really, really enjoyed them. So I'm going to make these into collages. So not a lot of difficulty. For this one, I'm starting with this door. So I have pictures from magazines that I've saved, thought might be interesting, and I love doors. I 
really like doors a lot. I'm going to put a door in this one. So let's just move that one to the side and play around with this one for a while. I found this sweet little butterfly. And I do love this blue up in the corner. I think it's so, so pretty. So maybe put that right there and lower this a little. Now that looks interesting, doesn't it? Over those pink shapes. I think that's kind of cool. Let's see what else we can find to put in this paint brushes. Hmm. Let me try cutting out this paint brush. It's got pink on it. I'll cut out these hands and see what they look like. I'm thinking just the hands. Or the hands could be letting the butterfly go. Like that. I think that gives quite a bit of meaning. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach these. I could also do a blue paintbrush, but I don't think I'm going to. I think that might overdo it. So let's go ahead and glue these down. And I want to cut this a little bit, with a little bit more detail along the painted edges. Okay, like that. And you won't see the whole paintbrush, but I want to cut maybe like that much. maybe a little bit less. As long as you can still tell it's a paintbrush. Okay, then the door. The door, I do have a dog down here too. I'd like to hide him. I will take care of that in a minute. Right, so let's just put some glue back of this really quick. And then the hands, Okay, there's my butterfly. I'm not sure I even want the hands. Well, we'll see. I'll save those hands just in case I want them. So I'm gonna coat the butterfly. It's stuck down well, so I'm not worried about that. The door is stuck down well. It's just this paint brushes, and I'm not quite sure why. I'll put some underneath. And some on top. I love it. Okay, so we're painting our world. The butterfly is the change coming through the door. And perhaps a brush here to signify help, someone else helping. I just want to cover up that little dog. I think that might be cool too. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to put it here so I need to mark it and I think this time I'll just use my pencil mark to show me where to cut it. So I'll cut it there and I'll cut it here. I was telling a little story on our collage. Not difficult. Save pictures that you like, that, that speak to you, and keep them. Keep them in a folder. I love this. This covers up the door, It all I mean the dog, and it also speaks to the story. Put it right in the corner and cover that dog, and then I'm going to put map media over it. I could just put a little bit of paint around these. That might be what I do. A little, a little white paint. 
and I'm going to use my finger. And just, you know, around the edges of some things. And down here around the bottom of this paintbrush. This paintbrush, just to kind of blend it in a little bit so it doesn't stand out so much where it's coming from. I think that kind of can be effective. It's kind of like a vignette look, and I love what that looks like. And I want to keep this pretty simple because, you know, these won't sell for a lot, but I feel like they can be uh, quite meaningful to people. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the edge of the door, you know, into get a little water there maybe just a little bit too bright white and you just you know play with your you can also use a baby wipe to wipe it away if it's a little bit too white for you but I I love lost edges sometimes I think it can look very kind of mystical almost you know kind of dreamlike we have that coming up from the door towards the butterfly. But I still want to see the door, so let me just get a big wipe. Just kind of wipe off the door. Okay. Okay, so I already like that better. And that white paint can even help right here with this edge where it went off. The color kind of transferred. That's pretty. that texture there. Let's do that down here too. I like that texture. See this kind of texture here? I can just kind of copy that a little bit through here. Yeah. And then maybe come up here too. Okay. So we have more of a simple kind of vignette look. And if you wanted to put the word hope there, by all means you could. So we have some dark blue here and there, and I'm thinking perhaps some more dark blue. And that was ink, if you recall. I that was primary ink. cyan, which is the same color that the ink was, and this is acrylic paint, lucky me. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that out on my palette. Not a lot. That angled brush that I have, well used, half inch angular. And I'm liking this more and more. I just think it's really coming out great. We'll do some dark up in this corner to give us that kind of vignette feel. And I'm being very slow because I love shading. That's one of my favorite things to do. Shade with color. baby wipe and get that corner fixed. I got off a little bit on the edge there. That's okay. I can always put white paint there as well. Okay. So where else? That makes your eye move around and sure if I want that there. I 
think what I need is dark down under this brush. And then down into here. This one I don't want. This dark here, I can use my baby wipe, gently rub it away. And maybe put a little white over it. Just to kind of get in there and get rid of all that blue. This is the fun part to me too, is the shading. I like to do that. So the shading is fun. And I'm thinking, because there's yellow here, maybe a little bit of yellow here would be nice. I have some yellow. And we'll see what we can do with a teeny bit of that. Not much, I don't need much. And a little bit of magenta. So I know, that's my other acrylic that I brought, quinacridone magenta, a beautiful pink magenta, and I don't need much of that. So we want some yellow here and here. It's quite a cool yellow, so I need to add magenta to make it a warm. Finger. I'm going away from the door because I don't want to get this on the door. Nice. Uh, it, it's speaking. It's actually speaking to 